Hello, and welcome to the Embedded Implementers Forum, a half-day virtual event where technologists from the embedded standards industry will guide you down paths to developing and deploying complex electronic systems more quickly and cost-effectively. I'm your moderator, Brandon Lewis, here with the first presenters of the day, Jessica Isquith and Doug Sandy, both of PICMIG, who will be explaining how adopting industry standards can streamline your system implementation. Today's event on a larger scale consists of a few 30-minute sessions followed by an hour-long presentation on designing uh, edge servers, but we'll be running back to back, so I'm gonna keep the introductions of our speakers brief. If you'd like to know more about our speakers in the presenter window in the upper left of your viewing console, you can click on their name and likeness and a bio will pop up. But Jessica Swift, nonetheless, is president of PICMIG, a nonprofit consortium of companies and organizations that collaboratively develop open standards for high performance telecommunications, military, industrial, and general purpose embedded computing applications. And Doug Sandy is the CTO of PICMIG. On to some housekeeping items before we begin the session, which will consist of roughly 25 minutes of presentation and perhaps a little bit of time for questions at the end. Um, note that Doug will be joining subsequent sessions in today's virtual event. So if we don't get to your question in this session, we may have an opportunity to do so later. So be sure to keep them coming. To ask questions, you're gonna use the Q&A tab, which is in the upper right of your webcast window. And we encourage you to make use of that early and often, not only in today's or in this first session, but in the rest of the sessions today. If you have questions pertaining to the webcast operation itself, you can put those in the Q&A box as well. And one of our technicians will be happy to assist if say your slides aren't working or your audio um, is off. The next to the Q&A tab, there's also a handouts tab where you'll be able to find the slides today and download those for your reading pleasure. Um, one final note before we begin is that all Open Systems Media webcasts are copyrighted and cannot be recorded without prior permission. But at this point, I think we can get started. And Jess, I'd like to introduce you to the stage. Great, welcome. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, Thank you. Uh, so we're just gonna kick off this session by giving a brief introduction to the organization itself, PICMIG or PICMG. And then Doug will jump into how these technologies are implemented into various um, solutions. So PICMIG started in 1994 as a nonprofit. We have approximately 130 members, 135 right now. Um, it's a global organization. We currently have over 20 countries represented in our membership. Um, and our focus, as Brandon stated, is on open standards for embedded computing, really um, open specifications. The organization is built on deep engineering expertise in the member companies. They all come together to collaborate, uh, leverage each other's expertise in elect electronic, mechanical, packaging, thermal, software, really the breadth of engineering required to develop an embedded system. Uh, we, in order to be successful, we do need to have a rigorous intellectual property policy, uh, which has led to, at this point, um, none of our standards require licenses to implement. Over the almost 30 years, over 50 standards have come out of the organization, leading to billion dollars in global revenue on an annual basis. So in a broad discussion, the difference, what an open standard, open specification brings versus a proprietary solution. Um, there are many organizations that develop standards and most of them follow, uh, most of them exist for the same reasons. You get multiple vendors to provide price and feature competition uh, also a better solution because again, you're leveraging engineering teams from multiple organizations. You also don't have vendor lock-in um, and which allows you to kind of work with different organizations as well as if a company decides not to continue a product you're using, there's most likely another vendor available. And it also really helps you get your solutions out to the market more quickly because you're using standards at the subsystems allowing you to focus on uh, your expertise. With that, uh, PICMIG is a vibrant uh, organization. This just gives you a little sense of seven of our active initiatives and the companies that are involved with them. And you can see, you probably recognize a number of these companies and understand uh, 
the expertise that's there. And when these organizations work together, you end up with strong um, specifications that last for decades. With that, I'm gonna let Doug get into some of the interesting applications. Thanks, Jess, and uh, thank you to everyone for joining us for this uh, this first session. Uh, as Brandon mentioned, I will be hanging out at the other sessions as well if you have questions for me there. Uh, we might have some time at the end of this session for Q&A, but uh, I wanted to walk you through uh, some of the cool PICMIG technologies and uh, how they are being used. And I've been around in, in PICMIG since pretty much the very beginning, and I really love uh, telling people about some of these cool applications. And the first one, I can literally say PicMig is out of this world, or at least PicMig based products or, or uh, devices are out of this world. This is the Mars Curiosity rover, and it has some boards on it that are based off of the uh, 3U Compact PCI uh, specification. I, I had the unique opportunity just to, in my, uh, my job here, at ASU, Arizona State University, to meet one of the designers of this board. It was really cool, chance happening. But, uh, you know, it's very fun to be working on, on technologies together with other companies that, that um, you know, find themselves in very unique positions. So Mars Curiosity Rover. And the next one I want to show you. Yes, we've gone from out of this world now to high energy physics. So big uh, particle colliders, uh, atom smashers. Uh, the um, micro TCA specification, uh, which found its way into the world coming out of the telecommunications space. Uh, but, uh, you know, after the telecommunications advanced TCA platform had had reached maturity, uh, we had a whole bunch of people come into PICMIG from the high energy physics community and say, we have a problem. We are developing these big, big um, um particle accelerator machines, and, and we can't keep them up enough. The, the, the equipment keeps failing, and we, need a, uh, and, and we need a better solution to keep these things running all the time. And PICMIG had the, uh, the micro TCA platform, which high availability was built into that, that from the very get-go, and uh, that community came into PICMIG. They uh, modified the specifications for their needs, and all of a sudden we had had micro TCA that, that fit the high energy physics needs. So if you look at that map on the, the lower right hand side, you see dotted there uh, all of the different places where high energy physics labs are. And uh, the majority of these labs were using uh, micro TCA at one point at least. So those are some of the cool applications. I want to just transition now into what what is it that you need to think about when you're selecting as a technology for your work and as an engineer myself I, I can tell you i've gone through this process many times maybe you're working on a, a project right now and and you're having to make some of these decisions uh, i i typically think for embedded i think well okay what's the size of this thing and uh, picmic has a range of platform sizes from from full shelves or racks all the way down to uh, something the size of a postage stamp. And obviously along with that, you know, you maybe you're thinking about weight, you know, size, weight, and power, the typical three that we, we hear about all the time. Uh, weight, you know, is this something that's going to be airborne or is this is something that's going to go in a, a, lunar, uh, a lunar explorer or a Mars explorer, right? Uh, the weight is important. Power consumption, does this need to run off, off of batteries or, uh, this is, is this going into a warehouse scale compute environment where energy efficiency is important? So power consumption, very important also. Uh, as we talked about for the, uh, the high energy physics, reliability and availability for some applications more important than others. In, uh, and then related to that, maybe fault tolerance or fail safe. Those two are, are, are different things. Uh, the uh, fault tolerant or fail safe uh, you need to stop the equipment in some cases where availability you want to keep it running in a degraded uh, state uh, but picmig specifications are designed some of them are designed specifically for those to meet those needs and uh, 
those specifications, you don't want to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, right? There's, there's a lot of work and a lot of expertise that goes into making those platforms reliable and available. Uh, Jess already talked about interoperability and ecosystem. It's, uh, it's great when you get a solution that works, but inevitably something breaks and needs to be replaced or you need to get parts from different vendors that play together. And that's, that's really where PICMIG and, and uh, open standards find their way into uh, the marketplace. That's, that's really the need that we address. And uh, if you've never used an open specification or open standard, standard before, the example that I like giving to people about why, why they're important is, um, I'll take something from another, another discipline. Imagine you go to the hardware store because you, you need to get a, a nut that threads onto a bolt that you already have. Imagine if there was no standard for threading on nuts and bolts. It might be very difficult. You might have to go to hundreds of hardware stores or maybe you have to go to the same vendor that you got that bolt from to get a nut that threads onto that bolt. But because we have, have a universal standards for thread sizes on nuts and bolts, you can go to any hardware store and get a bolt that threads onto the nut. Uh, we are doing the same thing. We're, we're providing interoperability and plug and play within embedded computing, the embedded computing space. Now, moving on this bottom row here, performance. You know, performance, how do you measure performance? I used to get that question all the time. It really depends on your application. Maybe it's, it's uh, throughput of I.O. Maybe it's uh, total processing capacity. Maybe it's battery efficiency. But whatever that is, you need to think about that. And then PicMake has a wide range of specifications that can help you reach those performance levels that you're looking for. Uh, I.O. capabilities, uh, especially when we're looking at things like uh, uh, automation and control. Uh, it goes well beyond what's required for your typical PC. So uh, that's something else you have to consider. Shock and vibration, thermal environment, those are also sometimes specific needs, especially in, in uh, areas that are, are um, more um, harsh environments. Okay. So uh, those are typical design considerations. And let me just show you a couple of spaces where PICMIG is making inroads. So uh, this is an exciting space, uh, Industry 4.0. And uh, Industry 4.0, it's, it's not your I'll say not your grandfather's industrial automation anymore. So Industry 4.0 combines uh, edge analytics or cloud-based analytics to help realize um, business gains, uh, things like higher factory efficiency in terms of throughput or efficiency in terms of, of uh, energy efficiency or better, better quality of product or better scheduling of product. And what you can see here in this, this uh, diagram infographic of a factory floor anything that's yellow is a potential place for compute equipment so we've got uh, control of of the environment and the lighting or the power plant within the, the facility uh, a lot of uh, factories uh, want to be greener and may have on-site renewable energy sources such as wind turbines uh, to bring into the plant and integrate with the the feed from the, uh, the power utility company. Uh, you see also uh, factory orchestration. So it's not typical control in terms of controlling a thing, but rather orchestrating how all of the jobs are working on the factory floor. We also see down on the factory floor, we've got line controllers, which control the jobs that are running on an, in, uh, an individual uh, assembly line itself. And then if we, push down into the assembly line, that little gray box up at the, the top right, we see uh, the, the lines, factory lines, are uh, actually composed of individual pieces of equipment or machines. And you've got a machine controller that uh, controls the operations going on in the machine. And uh, also, you might have a, a man-machine or human-machine interface as well. Uh, so those are all places where, where PICMIG technologies uh, can play. And uh, if I had to, to put some names out here of technologies that might play in here, I would say uh, um, Compact PCI, Micro TCA, um, the um, uh, Com Express and Com HPC all have, uh, have 
places here, but also things like mod blocks uh, because of its I.O. capabilities would, uh, would also be interesting candidates here. Let me show you another one just to show this is kind of PICMIG's uh, where it started is in industrial uh, automation. Let me show you another one that's that's really going places. Oh, bad pun. Yes. Uh, transportation. So uh, there is uh, uh, actually PICMIG specification in compact PCI serial, which is intended for railway, but there's a whole bunch of other things that could be used, PICMIG technologies that could be used in railway. Let's just Let's just look at a typical train here and some of the things that might be uh, controlled or require compute. We've got the instrumentation cluster within the, uh, the cab of the train. Uh, we've got throttle and braking control, which actually there's, there's uh, governmental requirements for throttle and braking control because uh, if the, the train doesn't brake properly, there's safety concerns. So there's special requirements there. Um, signage uh, inside the train. If you've ever looked up and you've seen next station, next stop, you know, it's, here's where you're going to be. Signage all has some sort of automation and uh, compute control. Door control, making sure the doors open when they should and don't open when they shouldn't. Uh, there's infotainment in, in there. Uh, infotainment might use uh, a special graphics processors to display things in a very uh, power efficient way. Also think about infotainment as sitting in the back of a seat. There's uh, some, some uh, constraints in terms of power and size as well. And then the last thing I have on here is wayside support. Um, depending on the, the railway, there may be boxes alongside the track, yes, in this harsh environment sitting outside uh, in a box somewhere, uh, gathering telemetry on the train or, or feeding information to the train. So. Uh, I hope you can see there's a lot of places here that could use some uh, embedded computing. Maybe some of you know this better than, than I do because this is your space. Um, but again, if we look at the PICMIG specifications that could play here. I mentioned Compact PCI Serial, but uh, ComExpress, ComHPC, even a uh, modified version of Advanced TCA, potentially on wayside support or Micro TCA. Um, there's a lot of, of potential here for PICMIG specifications. So with that, I'm going to hand things back off to Jess. Thank Hope you. to see you later. Uh, hello, everyone. I think Doug just gave a great introduction to how PICMIC technologies are used in certain applications. This is just a quick chart for you to see across many of our uh, technologies where they fit. And for example, with ComHPC, ComExpress, it's somewhat ubiquitous in embedded computing. You can see it in all kinds of applications. But what we've found is even though some of our specs were defined for a certain space, they find homes and provide solutions in others. So that's just a brief. And then with all of that, I would urge everyone to learn more about PICMIG uh, and ideally join and participate. Benefits of membership, as you can see here, include early access to key technologies, participation in the development, making sure your requirements are heard at the table. Um, also, we provide promotions and marketing efforts. Uh, you'll see that today is an example of this half day event. And you also can gain some leads based upon participation on our website. And one of the key things to our success is it's pretty flat organization in a good way. We are member driven. So the organization itself does not define the roadmap, the members do. So the collaboration starts from even a definition of a statement of work. And that's what we urge, and that's the one of the keys to our success. Uh, in order to encourage that participation, for 30 years now, we've kept the low-cost membership. We really want the engineers at the table working together so that we can provide to the embedded community the best building blocks in an interoperable, multi-vendor fashion. So thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I hope you enjoy all of the sessions. So I suppose at this time we have time for, for questions. Brandon, I'll leave it to you to. Yes, thank you, thank you for um, for that presentation. It was it was well received. Um, as Doug mentioned, we're going to move into the um, Q and A portion of the event. We have a couple of minutes here uh, to answer any questions you might have. 
Um, I'm going to start off with one. I know that PICMIG has been very active uh, this year, and, and uh, either of you can probably speak to this, but can you discuss some of the, um, you know, how many different specification families are, are working right now and some of the things that we may be able to expect uh, over the rest of this calendar year? Um, sure. sure. Uh, Jess just pulled up the slides here, the, the slide that she showed earlier. We have activities going on in all of these spaces right now. Uh, so you can expect work going on uh, or opportunities if you'd like to join PICMIG and be part of this, opportunities in all of these spaces. And um, uh, there's even some rumblings of some additional uh, new specifications. That's uh, one of the things just kind of mentioned is that we are member driven uh, in terms of, of where we go. There is no set technology roadmap. It's where our members want to go. So if you have a, a technology that you don't see or you need a solution in, in some space that you don't see that PICMIC offers, uh, through membership, you can actually easily uh, mm -hmm. start that process. Um, I will tell you one thing that doesn't necessarily show super well here across these, uh, these technologies is uh, we tend to think a lot uh, as engineers when we are, are trying to solve a problem in terms of what hardware do we want. And certainly we, we start with the hardware. A lot of the design challenges are there with the mm -hmm. hardware, the size, the weight, the power, the performance, all of those things that I went through. But PICMIG also act, has been actively working in the past and is continuing to actively work on the software side of these things. If you want to get interoperability and plug and play uh, you need to have a software so solution that enables that. So historically, we've had hardware platform management that's been leveraged across uh, many of our systems. And now we're working towards some, some more, um, I'll say Internet of Things type technologies using, using uh, JSON, using uh, standard Internet technologies. Not that it has to go out over the cloud, but using uh, more modern techniques to do that. So if you're interested in that, I would certainly um, be interested in hearing from you about, yeah. about that. I'd also say one of the initiatives that many people may not be familiar with yet is the Far Edge, and that's a process automation uh, solution that we have a team working on. Uh, it just started in the past year. It is very open for new members to join and participate. Uh, so that's something to, we'll start to be doing some more outbound communication within 2023 but it is still readily available for you to join and participate and help drive that initiative. I will also say that everything up there except for the Far Edge is expected to have uh, either new, new specifications released and or revisions. So a lot of activity, but 2023 is also a year of ratification within PICMIC. Great. Um, Doug, you mentioned uh, some of the non-hardware work, you know, software, firmware, et cetera. Um, how applicable is that work across PICMIC specifications? And you did mention that you'd uh, like to hear from uh, people who are interested in that type of domain. Um, is there an opportunity for more, you know, software types to get involved in PICMIC and benefit? Uh, my answer is... Yes. <laughs> Actually, you asked multiple questions there. Let me see if I can uh, take them one by one. Uh, I think you asked uh, across the PICMIG specifications, how broad is that? Uh, right now, we have what I would consider islands of, of software. Uh, so um, we are unifying uh, our, our member companies, I should say, are mm -hmm. unifying around uh, primarily a uh, Redfish uh, technology, which is an application programmer's interface that comes through yet another standards organization, the, the DMTF. And we have uh, work registries uh, between or agreements between uh, our two organizations to collaborate on that. And um, we're seeing that uh, in, in uh, a number of our platforms, but they're, they're sort of, we've standardized on Redfish. And the, uh, there's work going on right now, which is really exciting between PICMIG and the DMTF to unify a job management model across, you know, across all of, potentially all of the platforms and beyond PICMIG uh, in industrial automation uh, going on into the uh, more traditional server farm uh, stuff. So 
how that was, uh, you know, where in Pikmin kind of islands right now, but we're working on unifying it. Uh, the next question that I think I heard you ask is, is, is there a place for uh, software folks uh, in Pikmin? And the answer is yes, uh, there is a big place for software folks. Uh, I, by the way, I'll tell you right now, I teach software engineering at, at Arizona State University. So you've got a software person right now in the, the leadership of PICMIG. I speak software as well as hardware and systems engineering. Uh, and uh, I always would welcome more people who want to be involved in, in software. Now, not to slight anyone out there doing hardware or mechanical work, uh, nothing runs without the software. So it's... Uh, it's software I see is very and important. Software needs to run on so, something. Yes, yes. Software needs to run on something, but we never forget <laughs> the hardware, do we? Uh, so, um, in the past, we have had some some terrific software member companies, and we welcome uh, the continuation of that tradition within Pikmin. Did I get Great. your question? Yeah. yeah, both of them. Thank you. Um, uh, getting short on time here, so I've got one last question. You've mentioned. Uh, some of the benefits of membership at a high level there, both of you actually. Where can interested parties go to learn more about, you know, the membership process uh, and potentially, uh, oh. you know, get involved in specific specifications? Well, two ways. One, I recommend going to picmig.org. You can go to the join section, see all the different levels. But if you have any interest, please reach out. Send me an email, jess at picmig.org. Love to discuss um, more details about your interest in picmig share more information. So I would say the two first two steps, look at the website, but just email. It's very easy. Just at picnic.org. Great. I'm going to well, tag on that. So definitely go to Jess for the membership stuff. But if you have yeah. questions about technologies, reach out to me. I, I love talking to people about their ideas for potential new specifications. And Doug will be uh, joining us in the Q&A portions of the subsequent sessions. So if you have questions there, please feel free to, to load them up and we'll get to as many of them as we can. Uh, for this session, though, we're about out of time. So um, I, I've uh, pasted a link in the webcast chat that uh, to most of you. Uh, that you can follow to get to the next session, which will be starting in just a couple of minutes. And also when I end this webinar, um, you'll end up on a splash page that you can use to then access uh, the next session, which is introducing Mod Block 7 for ne the next generation modular system for industrial computing in various segments. So for those of you who cannot make it uh, to that session, thanks for attending and uh, participating. And for the rest of you, we'll see you in just a few.